Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have 2 to the power x squared multiplied by 5 to the power x equals 10. And we're going to be looking for x values. I know at this point you probably already guessed the answer, easy, piece of cake, whatever. But is that the only answer? That's the question, the type of question we need to ask. I'll be presenting two methods, at least that's what I'm thinking at this point. Let's see how this goes. For my first method, I'm going to separate the powers. Uh, 10 can be broken down into 2 times 5, so let's go ahead and write it as such. 2 times 5. And then I'm going to bring the 2's together and the 5's together. Make sense? So I'm going to write it as 2 to the power x squared divided by 2, and that equals 5 divided by 5 to the power x. By the way, we're not necessarily looking for integer solutions, we're looking for real solutions. Are there complex solutions? Something to think about. When we divide two powers with the same base, they have the same base, and when we don't have any exponents, it's 1 we can basically subtract the exponents. So this becomes 2 to the power x squared minus 1 equals 5 to the power 1 minus x. Awesome. Now, how is this helpful? If I'm not necessarily looking for integer solutions, then I can't safely say, hey, you know what? These two can only equal each other if the exponents are 0. I mean, we know for a fact that 2 to the power 0 equals 5 to the power 0, right? We should, hopefully because they're both equal to 1. So we can use that idea here. But not only that, we're also going to uh, find the other solution uh, using that idea. Once we eliminate that option, we'll get rid of that, so our equation is actually going to simplify. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. Notice that both exponents can be made equal to 0 if x squared minus 1 and 1 minus x are equal to 0 at the same time. But that's quite possible because if x is equal to 1, then both of these are going to equal 0, which means x equals 1 is a solution. And it's a kind of like a trivial one, and you probably already guessed when you saw this equation, as soon as you saw this, you said, hey, x equals 1, so what, right? Well, x equals 1 works because 2 times 5 equals 10. Easy, right? Piece of cake. And the fact that we have an x squared doesn't change the solution, for x equals 1, if uh, we had an x cubed, it would still work, right? But the second method would have a variation on that one. Anyways, you'll see how that goes in a little bit. But let's go ahead and simplify our equation as I promised before, so that we can get to the other solution. Because finding x equals 1 is not necessarily... I mean, I wouldn't undermine it, but it's not a huge accomplishment because it's kind of easy guess and check. But finding the other solution is actually really cool. So here's what we're going to do. I would like to write the 1 minus x as negative 1 times x minus 1. Notice that uh, when you have a minus b, it's basically the opposite of b minus a. Make sense? I mean, it should make sense, right? Somewhat. So now we can write this as 5 to the power with a negative sign in front of it, x minus 1. The opposite of x minus 1 is 1 minus x. Right? You can test with numbers. And x squared minus 1 is factorable into x plus 1 times x minus 1. This is the fun part. We're going to work with exponents without using any logs. First method is not going to use any logs at all. Just exponents. So notice that we have x minus 1 in both of these. So what we can do is raise both sides to the power 1 over x minus 1. As long as x does not equal 1. But we already taken care of that. x equals 1 is one of the solutions. Now assume x does not equal 1. Okay, assume, because we already know x equals 1 works, but right now we have to assume that x does not equal 1. Under these conditions, we can do the following. 2 to the power x plus 1 to the power x minus 1. And the other one can be written as 5 to the power negative 1 to the power x minus 1. Notice that both of these numbers have the same exponent, so we can get rid of that because x does not equal 1. Therefore, x minus 1 does not equal 0. Therefore, we can divide the exponent by x minus 1. But you can't just divide an exponent, right? I mean, you can, but uh, that's this is basically what it means. You raise both sides to the power 1 over x minus 1. 
because you can raise both sides to any power you want, right? As long as you're not introducing extraneous solutions, and we can easily argue that uh, it's not going to happen in this case. So x minus 1 cancels out, x minus 1 cancels out, leaving us with something super duper simple. So we get 2 to the power x plus 1 equals 5 to the power negative 1. So is this equation easy to solve? Absolutely. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write this as 2 to the power x times 2. We don't have to, but we could break it down. And 5 to the power negative 1 is just 1 over 5. Awesome. Now at this point, we can definitely multiply both sides by 1 half to get rid of the 2 because I want to end up with 2 to the x. Isn't that simple? And we get the following. Now what is that supposed to mean? This means that uh, 2 is raised to a power and we're getting a fraction. Hmm. So x is probably negative then, right? Yeah, it looks like it because if x was greater than 0, the smallest we can get with 2 to the power 0 is 1 and 1 tenth is less than that. So, and 2 to the power x is always increasing, right? That makes sense. So it's kind of like this. And since we're getting a y value of um, 1 tenth, like a s really small value, then x value has to be negative. Graphically, you can easily verify that, but when you think about it, also it makes sense. So we know x is negative. So what? Well, we can't find it directly because it's not a rational answer. It's not going to be straightforward. So what we need to do instead is use logs or the definition, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and take log base 2 on both sides. And then this should give me the answer, right? Go ahead and bring the x to the front. x times 1, because log 2 with base 2 is 1. x equals log of 1 tenth with base 2. 1 tenth doesn't look that good if you want to write it as 10 to the power negative 1. That's fine. And now we're just going to use, I don't think I need parentheses. We, we can go ahead and move the negative 1 to the front and just write it as negative log 10 with base 2. Whatever log 10 is in base 2, then we have to negate it. Make sense? Okay, great. So obviously there's more than one way to write it, uh, which I'm going to show you with the second method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick, and then I'll show you the graph. So my equation is 2 to the power x squared times 5 to the x equals 10. So we could ln both sides, right? Natural log. Okay, let's do natural log on both sides. This means we have a product. So the log of a product can be split up into a sum like this. And ln 10 is just ln 10. Now we can go ahead and move the exponents, but we had to do it first, right? Because we can only have a single exponent. x squared times ln 2 plus x times ln 5 is equal to ln 10. Uh-oh, this turned into what? A quadratic equation. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Quadratic equations are awesome, and this can be solved by using the quadratic formula. Also, by so you can go out and use the quadratic formula. I'm not going to show you that because we've done that already. Let's use another method. Vieta's formulas tells us that, I mean, first of all, x equals 1 is a solution. Why? Let me tell you why real quick. Because ln 2 plus ln 5 is ln 2 times 5, and that is ln 10. So the sum of the coefficients is 0, which means x equals 1 is a solution. I mean, vice versa. So, uh, we do also know that x1 times x2 is c over a in a quadratic equation, which is negative ln 10 over ln 2. But I know that one of the solutions is 1, so that leaves us with x sub 2, which is the other solution, which can be written as negative ln 10 over ln 2. But can I write it differently? Sure, you can also write it as uh, negative log 10 base 2. And now this brings us to the graph, not to the end of the video yet, because I still need to show you the graph. Now the graph of this function is kind of interesting because of the x squared in the exponent. We kind of get like a symmetrical shape, but since we have another um, factor, 5 to the x, kind of messes up the mm, location of the graph. It just moves it to the left a little bit. But as you can see here, there are two solutions. This is the negative 1, negative ln, uh, negative log 10 with base 2, and 1 is the other solution. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.